Hello, my name is Geneva Coulter, and this is my pitch presentation. The idea that I am pitching to you today is for the creation of an accessibility guide to the University of Alberta. I want to start with a bit of a story about my own experience on campus with accessibility and anxiety to set a framework for understanding why this idea is so significant to me. I used a wheelchair to manage chronic pain for about five years prior to having hip surgery two years ago. My first year of university was managed in a wheelchair, which as a transition from high school was pretty stressful. All of a sudden, I was making a trek across campus in any weather to get to your, my next class instead of just shifting over a couple rooms like I did in high school. While physical accessibility was a huge barrier in my ability to move around campus and get to my classes, my anxiety also ramped up heavily in that first semester. With first year university, your classes are all over the place. That's just how it is. In my first semester, my classes were in ETLC, Van Vliet, Humanities, ECA, and the TELUS building. The problem was that as a wheelchair user, I had to find paths between these buildings that didn't have stairs, ramps that were too steep to actually be manageable, and that were consistently shoveled. I took a tour of campus in August before classes started with my accessibility advisor to outline the paths I would take between my classes, but touring in August didn't account for snow. It also didn't account for my anxiety with getting between classes when everyone else would be moving between classes as well. Starting in September, I kept a paper copy of the campus map in my backpack for about two months. In that time, I was frequently asked how to get to different buildings on campus. This was not happening because they knew I had a map on me. It was happening because people just didn't know where they were going. And for the first two months, I couldn't tell them which way to go off the top of my head. But I could say, hold on, let's look at this map. This was before I realized that there was a map online as well. But there was something comforting in knowing that I had a physical map of campus with me at all times so that I could not get lost. And it helped other people as well. I managed my own anxiety in keeping that physical map with me, and I was able to help people with managing their worries by helping guide them to where they needed to go. Before I get too far into this presentation, I want to explain one of the terms that I will be using, and that is disabled students. On the screen, you are able to see two different models, the medical model of disability and the social model of disability. The medical model of disability puts all of the disability within an individual with no acknowledgement of societal factors that are impacting them, while the social model recognizes society as disabling an individual, often through lack of accessibility. As an example, with a wheelchair user. According to the medical model of disability, if a wheelchair user came upon a staircase, it is the individual's fault that they are unable to get to the top of the stairs in their wheelchair. Using the social model of disability, it is society's fault that a staircase was built that does not decrease barriers for the wheelchair user. In using the term disabled students throughout this presentation, I will be following the social model of disability that believes that society is disabling people. Before I go into what my proposal is, I want to give a little bit of background information that explains why this is a significant issue. Anxiety is related to an impending sense of doom and dread, often because of future unknowns and fear of what those unknowns may bring, that can result in physical and behavioral symptoms. For example, for a student that has anxiety about going to class, that may manifest as an actual inability to go to class. For university students, there are many factors that can lead to anxiety. Exams, lecture material, adapting to university life, there's many others. And for some students, an unknown is figuring out where they need to be. That might be finding a classroom, meeting with a professor, or even just finding somewhere they want to eat. In a report from the University of Alberta in 2011, 52.1% of students reported as having experienced overwhelming anxiety in the past 12 months. Based on trends shown by the National College Health Assessment, anxiety prevalence in university students is rising, as can be seen on the slide. In 2013, that number of students who had experienced anxiety was at 56.5%. In 2016, the number had risen to 64.5%. And in 2019, the number of students experiencing anxiety was at 68.9%.
Assuming that the University of Alberta has experienced similar trends to that of the National College Health Assessment, Canadian Reference Group, as of 2020, it is likely that more than two-thirds of U of A students will have experienced overwhelming anxiety in the past 12 months. So, to tie it together the last two slides, I want to bring your attention to this number. People with physical disabilities are two times more likely to experience anxiety than people without physical disabilities. And so, knowing that the prevalence rates of anxiety are rising in university students, we know that rates of anxiety are increasing for disabled students as well. In relation to physical accessibility, individuals with physical disabilities need to think more about where they are going because they need to know if there will be stairs on that route or if there will be ramps along the way so that they can actually get where they need to be. My proposal is for the implementation of a comprehensive accessibility guide of the University of Alberta that includes locations of accessible washrooms, accessible entrances to buildings that have push buttons, as pictured on the slide, interior maps of buildings on campus that show classrooms and lecture halls as well. The idea for this project began because I feel that there is a gap in knowledge for students at the University of Alberta. Disabled students on campus should not need to plan out their routes around campus days in advance because there's a lack of resources that tell them if there's going to be an accessible washroom in the classroom they're going to be in. While there is a map online that shows where buildings are on campus, it does not comprehensively show where accessible entrances to buildings are, where accessible washrooms are located, or even just interior maps that shows the placement of classrooms and lecture halls. The purpose of this project would be to improve accessibility for disabled students through increased awareness of building layouts and routes between buildings for the University of Alberta North Campus. With the implementation of a comprehensive accessibility guide, there would be increased knowledge of building layouts. Therefore, students would have reduced anxiety about some of the unknowns of campus that take form through physical structures and barriers. The purpose of this project is to also reduce anxiety that students may face in trying to navigate, navigate campus on a day-to-day -day basis and to help reduce inequality for disabled students to access post-secondary education, specifically at the University of Alberta. According to a report by Statistics Canada that was based in 2012, for people aged 25 to 64, only 14% of disabled people have a bachelor's degree or the equivalent, while for people without disabilities, 27% of people with a, have a bachelor's degree or an equivalent. So, through improving knowledge about accessibility on campus, the number of disabled people graduating from, with, from the U of A with a bachelor's degree could be increased. The objective of this project is to collaborate with disabled students at the University of Alberta to develop a comprehensive accessibility guide of the U of A that focuses on knowledge of physical accessibility of buildings, for example, where accessible washrooms are, accessible entrances that have push button power doors, where elevators are, and which buildings consistently have braille and signage, and also focuses on routes throughout campus that are exterior to buildings. This resource would then be accessible to students through accessibility resources at the U of A or be available as an app for U of A students. To start this project, I would begin by interviewing students with disabilities on campus to find out about their experiences with accessibility and learn more about trouble areas that they have found. After getting a baseline of information from students through those interviews, I would aim to do walking tours across campus with those students to see in practice the routes that they choose to take and those they would choose not to take. While compiling my data, I would work with a computer engineer to begin designing the framework that the website or app would work as. The impact that this project would have is that it would help to increase equality for disabled students that are experiencing physical barriers on campus. While an accessibility guide will not completely nullify physical barriers, it will provide a framework for students to work with to be able to have the full university experience. With less barriers to full participation as a student at the U of A, having a complete accessibility guide may also promote the University of Alberta as a more inclusive university that appreciates diversity, thus bringing in more disabled students that decide to study there. 
By having greater accessibility on campus, disabled students would be encouraged to increase their own personal autonomy, which would result in an increased level of personal well-being as well. For students that do experience overwhelming anxiety based around physical barriers on campus, having an accessibility guide would also help to decrease anxiety around the unknowns of moving around campus because there would be less unknowns. Resources on campus. I will work with them to make the accessibility guide available to students. Because of the framework that accessibility resources already has with their website and other resources, adding an accessibility guide would be beneficial to them. With completion of the project, I will leave it to accessibility resources to continue to monitor and update the website or app as changes to building infrastructure occurs across campus. This is the end of my presentation. Thank you for listening. I hope that you found the presentation engaging and worthwhile. If you have any follow-up questions, please feel free to contact me.